war itself had become more perilous. The weapons had evolved. It has remained the same. Hunt them down and kill them off. One. The Underworld franchise is a series where I've heard about it, but I've never had any interest in watching it until now. What is a franchise that I can talk about in one video that was planned to be like five videos in a ranking, but then plans change. So I'm just gonna combine all of these things into one video, five movies, and then the ranking at the end, what I think about them. And I've never been too keen of vampires or werewolf film. I don't know why. Maybe that has to do with the fact that I grew up with the whole Twilight Saga shit. They never interested in me. So this is kind of me one foot in of the werewolf and vampire genre at least one side of it maybe it'll get me to watch the lost boys or the howling franchise anyways let's talk about the first one that came out in 2003 one family lusting for power and wealth soon we'll defeat the vampires on their own ground So one thing I noticed immediately about this film is that it's basically vampires or werewolves or what's called lichens with guns. That sounds both cool and ridiculous. And there is one ridiculous moment of Celine shooting the ground, shooting holes in them so that she could fall down. That shit was ridiculous. There's been this big war between the two for like 600 years, six centuries. As we see in like the third film, it's been going on since like 1402 or 1401 until now, which is I'm assuming early 2000s. One real big positive is the hierarchy in this film. So when we first see the vampires or ceiling going to big mansion on the other side the werewolves of lichen they live underground so it's clearly established that the vampires see them as higher than the lichen which makes sense because they were slaves to them as it is revealed by lucian in this film where they're being treated like slaves to the vampires to the elders seeing them as higher just because they're different and all that stuff and how victor later on is kind of a traditionalist where he couldn't stand a filthy werewolf or lichen being with his daughter being in love with his daughter so i really like the whole hierarchy and like the chain of commands and how they see each other threw me off i was like okay this is gonna be a war between vampires and werewolves it's gonna get bloody right but no there's like this hierarchy thing which is like, okay this is cool like i like this whole world that they're setting up the lichens want this character named michael and turns out they want to blend their blood with vampire blood to make a hybrid powerful within the typical lichen and vampire there's also this thing where silly falls in love with them like i don't i don't know maybe she's just different from the others she has a love for like humankind or mankind i don't know but she apparently loves them all right it feels like it's just kind of there forced in a way but whatever speaking of the human element they are walking around normal human people which means that nobody knows about vampires or lichens existing at this point in time point of having michael be bitten by lucian and having a combined blood so that they can have the perfect union between the two species and then also the transformations done in the film it looks decent not the best but it looks decent for a film that came out in 2003 i was like, okay you know what it doesn't look weird or funky most of the time it's done in the dark it's hiding the weird cg and then craven this character i like calling him a goddamn rat not only is he working for or working with Lucian respects the elders but he doesn't really care for them or I don't know if he's even care he cares about himself he cares about being in the higher ranks being a part of the elders sitting on those chairs or whatnot he thinks of him as that as someone who's higher than all the other vampires but he survives because he's a rat and knows how to rat himself around or whatever or maybe not a rat maybe a goddamn cockroach just kind of surviving anywhere and is willing to do anything to get to his goal Lucian is a character that's interested because he has at least some sort of layers to him where yes he's the opposing species he's a lichen they're despised by vampires but once he explains the war and why it's been going on for so long now granted it's basically over a girl but we will find out in the third movie that was kind of just the final catalyst but it seems like victor killing his own daughter lucian love had this big affair was the final catalyst in starting this war so he's a really cool character but sadly he is killed off also another thing i want to mention this film really is a time capsule because of the whole leather but she's celine she's wearing all this leather stuff it's like who would wear that and like i do wonder if like keep begging so just doesn't want to do it no more because she has to wear that really tight leather suit it does not look comfortable at all and then one of the elders victor who is like dead but not dead him and the other elders marcus they're like in this chamber thing asleep and sort of awaiting their return sitting on the throne or chairs but celine wakes him up early knows about all these things proves that craven is just a little rat and cockroach but victor has plans of his own celine finds out about his whole daughter thing and now he sees celine as a daughter is willing to do what's necessary to kill his own family in order to keep the tradition of vampires on top lichens at the bottom which is what started the whole resentment celine has to kill him as well in this cool like head kind of slice thing looks a bit weird but whatever and so by the end celine is by herself with michael with craven having his own goals victor not being who she thought he was and then lucian being dead can be on their side both her and michael are on the run by themselves and they only have themselves to worry about and kind of trust because she can't trust nobody else both have become the hunter by the end of the film who would end it so the film overall it is still pretty good it still has this really cool world building of vampires and lichens how they work and how they should work according to some elders a few ridiculous stuff like the whole
was shooting lore thing and whatnot. But this first one is still quite a bit of fun and still pretty good. War between vampire and lichen has raged for centuries. Now my own kind have turned against me. Underworld Evolution came out, I think, three years after the first one, and it continues the story of Michael and Celine on the run by both vampires and lichens. One thing I like immediately is that they kill off Craven. Craven wakes up, one of the elders, Marcus, immediately has like this different look, wing, bat vamp or whatever, bites him to get all the info out. He just kind of flies around, bites it, drinks the blood of certain vamp or werewolf, figures out all the details and info and whatnot. And then this one is obviously much more gorier. Hold on shots of like ripping heads off of werewolves or vampires or just showing blood for a longer extended amount of time which makes sense because if this is a war between vamp and lichens bound to be blood at some point so i was expecting at least one of the films to get super kind of bloody or gory show more excessive blood hold shots on ripping heads off or whatnot so the big kind of like plot or device mcguffin kind of item is this watch thing which ties into celine and how victor killed her parents and whatnot and how it will help marcus revive his own brother who's apparently like a werewolf and he's a vamp but either way it's really a device to open up some sort of like underground i'll be honest I completely forgot about this. All I know is that Marcus wants it. He flies around, causes havoc and trouble for all the characters, and is willing to kill anyone that steps in his way or lies to him. And because Marcus is going around, flying around, fighting this watch, killing everyone in his way, he kills Michael, which I was like, okay, good. Like, actually, kind of glad because, again, this whole between Celine and Michael, I don't really get it. I don't know why it's there, but it's there. And I also seen his first transformation of a hybrid was actually pretty cool. It's the face of a werewolf, thieves, and whatnot, or vamps. So when he apparently is dead, I was like, okay, cool. This is, you know what? I don't mind this but then guess what you know we're not gonna do that we're not gonna kill him off we're gonna find some way or some device or whatever bring it back and turns out because he's a hybrid through blood images and whatnot he's back alive like, okay so i guess being a hybrid is the way for the writers to be like you know we can do whatever we want right no stakes whatsoever the whole point of him dying was for selena go insane essentially and killing marcus but i guess that's not the case because he's just back alive by the end team or like the alexander army task force was there to be useless they were there for marcus kill them they did absolutely nothing and then, oh yeah, another ridiculous moment. I'm not expecting one, at least one ridiculous moment in all these films now, where Selena is reloading clap, or like clap reloading or something. She reloads by clapping. Hilarious. Really dumb, but a lot of fun. They introduce a character named Tannis, and he's another kind of craving where all he cares about is himself. He is by himself. He's a rat. He has viable information about Marcus and the watches and his brother and all this stuff, which will lead to his downfall and his death because Marcus is at his place, gets information out of him. And the only reason I even mention him is because he is relevant in this film and in the third film he is kind of relevant and important integral moment in both these films alexander who turns out to be like the father of marcus and all the other like elders or people i think he's like the father to all these like elders that are like creating chaos or just you know marcus and he's not able to kill them or he is able to kill them but he's just not willing to because it's family and it's hard to do that Celine tries to convince him to get rid of his own sons but that's very hard it's a family so instead of killing his own sons just like victor did to his own daughter he is willing to clean up the messes that they've made cover up all of these things about vamps and lichens from the public and so because of that he's just been letting his sons go around creating chaos not willing to interfere and so that's a really cool kind of way to again kind of world build this second one is essentially continuing the story with Aline and michael but then also adding on these characters and things adding to the lore means how they're hidden from the rest of the population but this would eventually get alexander killed as well because he's not willing to face the fact that and do the inevitable which is kill his son and he can't do that so that gets him killed marcus has no issues getting rid of of him and then marcus he also isn't this like bat vamp for the majority of the film eventually he sucks off enough blood i guess hold on that isn't right whatever he sucks enough blood to turn into a human form and then speaking of sucking things off by the end Celine finds out michael is supposedly dead and whatnot and then in order to defeat marcus and his brother he needs to suck off alexander because not only does alexander want this but it's a way for the future and for her to get more powerful so that she isn't affected by sunlight so she sucks him off by his wrist man the more i say that the more it doesn't really sound right either way he sucks off some blood making her into kind of a super not super is super the right word making her an enhanced vampire she's not affected by sunlight by the end go kill marcus all that army that's there they're all dead it's marcus versus celine and michael as he comes back as celine finds out it has a really cool head kill thing by michael ripping out the literal head of his wolf that was really cool killing marcus impaling him through his head so the film is all with celine and michael surviving their run once again by marcus and werewolves lichens in order to live to see another day i do like this one it is good it is a lot more gory 
warrior but i don't know i think the first one set up it's like world building a lot more better with seeing how vampires work and lycans work and, and all this stuff or this one does the same with the whole alexander character and canis character but on a much more grand level of why they're not noticed by the human population underworld evolution is still good i still very much enjoyed it it's still a good continuation one born into privilege sonia you risk too much for a father to ignore the other bred for slavery lucian you are Underworld Rise of the Lycans is a prequel to the series and tells the story of how Lucian and the Lycan kind came to hate and despise all the vampires and how the war started with this one vampire girl. And so that's kind of the issue with this one. Watching this film, you're thinking, okay, I don't know how this ends. So it's like, I don't know why am I watching this or what's the whole point or purpose of doing this film. With that being said though, it's still a good film. It's enjoyable with knowing the end result of how everything starts as it is mentioned in the first film. Everything from Lucian loving Sonya enslaving all of these lichens he's himself and vampires as higher than werewolves and all these things it's cool to see but did it need a film i don't know leaning towards more no but i also didn't mind this film so it's like um you know what i'm all right with this you know not needed but i'm fine with it so first thing that victor does kill the parents of lucian and he's about to kill baby lucian but he's like you know what i'm gonna enslave him kind of twisted and messed up about how he sees him as a son but then he's like you know what you're gonna be enslaved because you're different than me these movies essentially show like slavery and racism right it's essentially that but with vampires and werewolves or at least that's what i got out from this series but despite lucian being enslaved there's one thing that's keeping him around and it is sonia or sonja no i'ma call her sonia even though there's a j i think they call her sonia i'ma call her sonia he is in love with her they both have a love for each other it's this huge a big bear if anyone were to find out it would cause a riot 1401 but with vampires and werewolves so yeah it's a big deal this big affair if it was leaked out it would be very disappointing on victor's sort of perspective as more time goes on the elders notice that sonia is missing from her chair because she is one of the people in those chairs and councils or whatnot and so the one person that finds out about this affair is tanis but the interesting thing about this is that he doesn't rat her out well at least not yet because he cares about himself and what he wants is to sit on one of those thrones he wants to be one of the council because that's what he cares about sonia on the other hand she doesn't care about that whatsoever redo this trade of helping lucian get out but by the end it doesn't matter because victor does suspect that tanis is like working with sonia and lucian or not maybe not lucian but in cahoots but then he lies he reveals to victor about the whole affair confronts sonia and then imprisons her whether it's both sides or why not it seems like there's going to be betrayal within their own species vampires are willing to betray each other for their own good for their own selfish needs in order to get on top which begs the question is this war even worth it but victor doesn't see that he sees himself as someone who has these rules and you better follow these rules because if you don't you're gonna get killed or in prison who knows but he has these certain rules to follow them or you die since lucian is out he leads some of his people out but is willing to go back inside to fight off all the vamp which then leads to him getting tortured again and being whipped and then leading all his people to this war now one thing i did not expect is for victor to actually care about like obviously he cared about sonya but he's like yes kill his own daughter super messed up but you can see on his face he does truly care about his daughter but because of his ideals and the way he works able to be thorough and kill his own daughter knowing the fact that he won't see her ever again just because of a love affair is a bit you know extreme a bit seeing his daughter go away being killed which is the final catalyst to lucian of starting this war rebelling against vampires fighting against them and i guess winning in the end this first battle they win technically because victor and the other elders they go on hiding and sleeping and whatnot to establish how the war starts how it came to be how both kinds resented each other and how the final catalyst was sonya dying and technically they won the first battle or at least lycans won the first battle which related this long ass sixth century goddamn war and oh yeah i forgot as well celine shows up by the end just to kind of credit keep making sale as oh yeah she's in the film for like the last 20 seconds of it she's kind of showing up recapping her stuff i guess so because of a stubborn man or a stubborn vampire elder who loves being traditional he doesn't see his daughter being fit to be living so he gets rid of her while the lover lucian is broken so they start fighting for years and centuries that's really it when you think about it i still like this movie rise of lichens it's still a good film wasn't necessary no but it's not bad but i can also see people be like no nah, this movie's not necessary everyone knows the end result of it it's been said in the first film what's the whole point of it i guess the whole point of it was to kind of show us and then lead into underworld awakening but i don't know was necessary but underworld rise of the lichens very much enjoyed entertaining still liked it still good i was held captive for 12 years Ready? humans hunt the lichens and vampires 
Underworld Awakening might be my least favorite of the series because nothing really happens but also at the same time things happen and they had something there. They had a really interesting concept of humans finding out of the identities or just the existence of vampires and werewolves and they should have, I don't know, done something with that and they did but again it went back to hey guess what lichens are back they're in charge of this whole corporation thing and it's like no you had something there like maybe I just wanted too much things but all they did was guess what we find out they're here we're gonna try to find a cure or a vaccine or whatever we're gonna try to find something to prevent the infections from happening and that's really it they really should have gone into human perspective of it in this film or the detective and the so-called facility thing corporation that's really it this cop guy or detective is there to help out and aid Celine and getting rid of lichens in the facility and do nothing as well he's there for explaining stuff and talking about how the world was like 12 years since she's been asleep there's one positive for this is the fact that they do portray Celine as a villain from the human race I do like that all over the news all of it will just kind of surface level they didn't really extend it nor go into it because I don't know lichens who knows so Michael in this film is kind of non-existent because he I guess dies in the first 15 minutes or whatever goes in the water there's a water explosion both of them go into hiding or not hiding but go to sleep put by the doctors turns out his DNA has been transferred into this girl named Eve and he died he was just killed off screen which never really cared for the character never really got why she loved him but I guess if people do love this character kind of a disservice in a way to being like what if people did like this character fell in love with him for the past like two movies and then just have him be written off like that or killed off like that so yeah Eve this girl she feels like a plot device like a MacGuffin I don't really have much to say about her she's just there turns out she is the daughter of Celine and I guess Michael in a way because of DNA tests behind the scenes off screen stuff or whatever she is a hybrid she needs blood to feed in in case she gets shot by like a bullet meets another vampire named David they go into this underground secret vamp thing bunch of vampires who are hiding from extinction now this is like the only group or like family of vampires that actually are good to Celine because they don't betray her at all in this film or in the next film they are actually good vampires sort of mind their own business until they meet Celine and Eve and brought into this war and they aren't just super just kind of nice vampires they just want to live their life but because of extinction and extorty and devices that can tell if you're a vampire or lichen they have to hide from everyone same thing for lichens but they are hiding in disguise and then there are some that are out kind of baiting people or vamps so that the lichens can rise up because surprise that doctor or whatever is a lichen having trust of the government so that they can have this facade human race thing trying to rebuild lichens into creating more and super lichens they want super lichens and apparently Eve this little girl is the key to that and the one thing I forgot Celine had was that she was invincible to sunlight so when David dies she like cuts into his body grabs his heart and then squeezes it saving and reviving David back again because she has the blood of the future said by Alexander and so I completely forgot about that until they mentioned that in the fifth one I don't think she's a hybrid she's just very enhanced or I guess a super vamp I'm assuming she's very much enhanced by the whole sucking off the blood of Alexander and so because lichens are the one behind it all or not behind it all but they're disguising themselves this whole movie feels like a giant waste of time you had this human element granted I don't know what you do with that but you had something there you had the backlash you could have had them help or I don't know maybe they wouldn't really help both sides they were just kind of smack in the middle of this big war between vamps and werewolves that's been going on for so long so maybe doing the whole human thing was a big mistake they had something there and then instead they kind of go back to the whole that is called vampires and lichens they're still at it though in I guess 2010s it was just uneventful I was like oh okay they're doing something kind of cool something new apparently these super lichens they can heal so they can shoot one of these lichens or super lichens they can heal faster so there's that so I guess that's what makes them different from a typical normal lichen to a super lichen horrible name for it but what is he gonna call it so yeah this four film is not really impressive it's there it is what it is nothing really you miss Eve is just kind of there as a plot MacGuffin device the way they wrote out Michael was kind of lame despite not liking his character I think fans of this will probably not be too happy of his write out Thomas and David those vampire group thing or at least their family or group they were cool so yeah Underworld Awakening it was all right must not rest until we have destroyed their final sanctuary tell your Marius I'm not finished with this war the fifth and final film underworld blood wars or at least the final film as of recording this in 2021 called blood wars and there's blood in it it's got a really cool like bind rip kill um you know this movie was somewhat disappointing i mean it had wars in it and i was like okay is this gonna end the war and it didn't which is fine it seems like this was gonna go on it's like this big old cycle of there's always gonna be this weird tension and war between vampires and lichens which i'm fine with but getting to that end was just kind of like boring and kind of a dull movie they introduced kind of love affair thing with the lichen 
and vampire again i guess it's calling back to the first film that wasn't necessary they were there to i guess kill celine and have her come back a lot of it is just prepper war and there's not a lot of war going on which is a bit disappointing and then as i said for awakening this film reminded me elaine has that whole super blood thing where she could bring people back to life and she isn't affected by sunlight also eve is gone so again awakening is just kind of looking back on it it's just not really relevant at all because they route eve michael it's like okay what's the point of that if they are gone that should be a motivation for selena to fight back again or at least try to stop this whole war they didn't go that route tied to how michael died apparently this like leader guy who just gets introduced in this film killed michael during that 12 year time span i don't know why i mean i guess they need to explain why because they didn't explain it well enough in awakening good thing is that thomas and david they're kind of grouped all around and i was thinking oh no everyone's gonna betray selene but no like david and thomas they're good people they're good vamp and they're willing to help selene because she helped them during the whole awakening human stuff and he even makes a sacrifice for selene and david with one of the elders killing him because one of them is victor's wife she wants revenge against selene because she killed victor and so there's this facade with her and her henchman who's also like a double agent but that made sense because you know she's not gonna forgive selene all of a sudden be like yeah you know what you should help us stop this war because why not and you killed my husband so i'm definitely gonna think about getting my revenge on you selene does die there's a good chunk of this movie during the i guess last second act and third act where you don't see her for a good chunk i'm like okay they killed her off permanently this is getting interesting david is now the main character which i don't mind david but he doesn't have enough established kind of on-screen time for him to be like the next lead i was a bit worried i was like okay that's a bit weak but they know they just kind of bring her back to shenanigans and whatnot for that chunk of time i was like okay this is interesting going somewhere different killing off main lead most people aren't gonna like this let's see where this goes david's a part of this whole like his mother was someone all of that stuff i just don't doubt didn't really care by that point at least david gets a really cool again that spine kill thing and he just rips out like a spine of a wolf that looked really cool that looked like a fatality for mortal kombat and so by the end once he comes back it comes back full circle where instead of running away from vamps and lichens she becomes an elder herself you had her in the first film being a part of this group being betrayed by them she leaves them she's off on her own with this hybrid she's on the run for most of it and she's being tested on in the fourth film running away not only from both these species but now from human beings and then in this film stop this war which doesn't really happen it kind of does but really it's gonna be this whole cycle this ongoing war where she doesn't have a solution for it so instead she will become an older and hopefully do something better instead of running away to see an end result or kind of a peace between the two species but apparently they make it clear that that won't happen fine with that but again i think the issue is the journey of getting here getting introduced to this whole love affair with this vamp and werewolf don't really care about victor's wife finds out about that kills that one vampire chair the new leader of the lichens who cares you know all right i like the whole victor wife stuff but then she gets caught for it the whole david thing i don't really care why establish that in this film when it's called blood wars maybe this was planned to be like a prequel or not prequel but a two-parter but as of right now there's no sixth film so it just kind of feels like yeah you know this is it however i will give credit having celine be gone for like a good 30 minutes or maybe 20 minutes of the film was a nice surprise so in the end this franchise the final film underworld blood wars ends the series on an all right way not the best way i don't even know if it was a planned ending or there was going to be more sequels but as of right now it's an all right way to end the series and franchise maybe we'll get one one day maybe not probably not there's really no reason to go back Celine became an elder and that's really it and people watch it for kate beckinsale as Celine. so if she's become an elder she's not gonna go off and do the things that she's doing she's gonna sit on one of those chairs or thrones and the council of vamps i guess blood wars was all right just a quick little section here i want to rank all five films from the worst to the best but it's not really like a bad film number five will be underworld awakening this film is basically useless looking back on it the way they wrote out michael eve is useless it's just kind of there for a plot device mcguffin thing and the whole human aspect was a bit wasted but also why go there if you weren't gonna do anything with it but film's all right number four will be underworld blood wars it's an all right ending to the series coming back full circle for selena being elder but getting to that journey was so boring and super dope number three will be underworld rise of the lichens despite being a prequel and me not really liking the idea of having a prequel to a film it's a fun watch you get to see lucian once again seeing the whole slavery seeing how he became the hate resent vamp how victor killed his own daughter because he couldn't stand the whole affair thing having werewolf and his family how he sees it or being in a very traditional family and you already know what's going to happen by the end number two will be underworld evolution it's a good continuation of the first film being on the run but i don't necessarily care for michael but he's just there 
Marcus is pretty cool in his wing form. Janus is a snitch and a cockroach, which is what makes him a good character to hate. Kinda like him in the third one. And they're adding a bunch more lore to it because why not? And then number one is obviously the first one, Underworld 2003, film that's best served as setting up the world, adding its mythos, how the world is around these vamps and ligands, how the human race don't know anything about them or their existence, the hierarchy within vamp and ligands. Ligands are at the bottom, vamps on top. You just understand the whole world just by seeing Celine going to that big mansion, having that whole boxing ring theme of the whole lichen stuff. It is still ridiculous, you know, the whole shooting in the ground. It looks fine nowadays. Looks weird, but it's fine. And that is it for the Underworld franchise and series. Overall, a pretty good series to binge watch. Not like the best of all time or like the worst. My favorite was clearly the first one, but even that is just pretty good. It's a franchise that some people will probably very much adore. Either grew up with it or they just love the idea of vampires and werewolves fighting each other with guns. Basically what I gathered, reinvent or do something new and different with vampires and werewolves. Add guns with them because why not? And you know what? It's cool, you know? It's ridiculous at some point. None of the films were like awful or couldn't watch. Had some issues with, you know, awake and blood wars so that's it for me this has been the road so far and thank you for watching